Welcome to an extraordinary journey into the myths and legends from around the world. In this series, we'll explore the fascinating stories of mythical creatures and cryptids from every country on Earth. Today, we embark on our adventure in the Americas, a land of diverse cultures, ancient traditions, and some of the most intriguing and mysterious creatures known to folklore. From the dense rainforests and towering mountains to the vast plains and bustling cities, each country in the Americas has its own unique tales to tell. A jumbie is a mythological spirit or demon from Caribbean folklore, including Antigua and Barbuda. The term jumbi is used for all evil spirits. There are many types of jumbies, reflecting the Caribbean's diverse history and cultural mix, including influences from African, Amerindian, East Indian, Dutch, English, and Chinese myths. Different cultures have unique ideas about jumbies, but generally, they are believed to be the spirits of people who were evil in life and continue to do harm after death. Unlike typical ghost stories, which often describe spirits as misty figures, jumbies are seen as dark, shadowy beings. Nahuelito is a lake monster said to live in Nahuel Huapi Lake in Patagonia, Argentina. Similar to Nessie of Loch Ness, Nahuelito is named after its lake and described as a giant serpent, a large hump, or even a plesiosaur. Photos have supposedly shown its serpentine body or hump. The name Nahuelito means Yaguarete, a large wildcat from the Americas. The legend dates back to indigenous stories before European colonization. In 1897, Dr. Clemente Onelli, director of the Buenos Aires Zoo, began receiving reports about a strange creature in Patagonian lakes. In 1910, George Garrett saw a creature in Nahuel Huapi Lake, describing it as five to seven meters long and two meters above the water. His account, made public in 1922, led to the first organized search for Nahuelito. Since 1922, the Buenos Aires Zoo has tried to gather evidence of a plesiosaur in Patagonian lakes, but none has been found. The lake is now called Laguna del Plesiosario. In 1960, the Argentine Navy chased an unidentified underwater object in the lake for 18 days, linking it to Nahuelito. In 1988, photos of Nahuelito near Bariloche were published, with the photographer insisting it was not a log or wave, but the monster itself. The Chikchani is a legendary creature from Andros Island in the Bahamas. Described as three feet tall and resembling an ugly, furry or feathered owl, it is said to live in the forests. According to legend, treating a Chikchani well brings good luck, while mistreating it brings bad luck. Sightings of Chikchanis continue today. They are believed to make their nests by pulling several pine trees together and formations of these trees have been reported. The Heartman is a creepy and menacing figure in Barbados folklore, often used to scare children into behaving. According to the legend, the Heartman targets disobedient kids, carving out their hearts and feeding them to the devil. He is depicted as a skeletal man with cow legs, dressed in all black with chains, weapons, and a large black hat. The Heartman drives a black hearse, frequents churches and parishes, and sometimes gives candy to children to lure them close enough to attack. Tata Duende is a supernatural creature from Creole folklore, known for protecting animals and the jungle. This spirit is famous in Maya and Mestizo cultures, and parents often use stories of Tata Duende to scare children into behaving, as it is said to lure kids into the jungle. Farmers would blame strange farm occurrences like intricately braided horse manes on this creature. Descriptions of the Tata Duende vary, but it is typically depicted as a three-foot-tall figure with a wide-brimmed hat, sometimes red, and animal skin clothing. It has backward-facing feet and no thumbs. 
Children are warned to hide their thumbs if they encounter it, or duende might bite them off. It is also said to whistle distinctively, smoke cigars, and play the guitar. Acalica are mythological creatures from Bolivia, sometimes referred to as weather fairies. They are believed to control the weather and live in caves. These elusive beings are rarely seen, but when they do appear, they take the form of small, wizened men. Kurupira is often depicted as a small, red-haired being with backward-facing feet. His hair can also ignite and turn into fire. It is said to inhabit the forests, protecting them and the creatures within. Kurupira is known for its mischievous behavior, particularly targeting hunters and loggers who disrespect the forest. It may lead them astray or create illusions to confuse them. Despite its mischievous nature, Kurupira is also considered a guardian of wildlife and defender of the natural world. The Wendigo legend comes from the Algonquin-speaking tribes in North America, including nations such as the Pequot, Narragansett, and Wampanoag of New England. It's also found in the folklore of Canadian First Nations like the Ojibwe, Chippewa, Potawatomi, and Cree. Some tribal cultures see the Wendigo as pure evil, like the Boogeyman. Others believe it's a human taken over by evil spirits as punishment for bad behavior such as selfishness, gluttony, or cannibalism. Once someone becomes a Wendigo, there's little hope for them. According to Native American folklore, the Wendigo prowls the woods on dark winter nights, searching for human flesh and luring victims with its creepy ability to mimic human voices. When people went missing in the woods, the Wendigo was often blamed. Descriptions of the Wendigo vary, but most say it's about 15 feet tall with a thin, haggard body reflecting its endless hunger for human flesh. In his book, The Manatus, First Nation Canadian author Basil Johnston described the Wendigo as a gaunt skeleton with a strange and eerie odour of decay and death. The Wendigo legend has been passed down through generations. One popular story tells of a Wendigo that was defeated by a little girl who boiled tallow and threw it on the creature, making it small and weak enough to be attacked. Scholars think the Wendigo represents real-world issues like starvation and violence. Its connection to a possessed human may symbolize how these communities view certain taboos or negative behaviors. It's clear that these monsters can take different shapes and forms. Some Native American myths suggest that crossing certain lines can turn people into hideous beings. As Johnston wrote, turning Wendigo can become a reality when someone resorts to destruction in difficult times. The Basilisco Chilote is a creature from Chilota mythology, originating in the Chiloé archipelago of southern Chile. It is described as having the crest of a rooster and the body of a serpent. Hatched from an egg incubated by a rooster, it lives in a hole dug under a house and feeds on the phlegm and saliva of the inhabitants, causing them to dehydrate and die. To kill the Basilisco Chilote, you must burn the egg as soon as it is laid and kill the rooster that laid it. If the creature has already hatched, the only way to destroy it is by burning down the house where it resides. Tunda is a myth from the Pacific coastal region of Colombia and Ecuador, particularly among the Afro-Colombian community. This shape-shifting entity resembles a human woman and lures people into the forests to keep them there. Tunda can change its shape to appear as a loved one, like a child's mother, to lure victims into the forest. It feeds them shrimp to keep them docile, a state known as entundamiento. Despite its shape-shifting abilities, the tunda always has a wooden leg shaped like a molinillo, a utensil for stirring hot drinks. It cleverly hides this defect from its victims. In some versions, tunda appears to male loggers or hunters as a beautiful woman, luring them away to reveal its hideous nature and either suck their blood 
or devour them like a wild animal. La Chegua is characterized by its face, which resembles a decomposing horse. This myth is prevalent in rural areas, although its actions are similar to those in the rest of Mexico and Central America, such as bathing at night. La Chegua sometimes appears among herds of horses, causing panic by mounting one of them. Other versions of the story say that La Chegua appears on roads as a beautiful woman, targeting womanizers or drunkards. She asks for a ride, and her appearance is captivating. A young woman with an oval face, large black eyes, long curly hair, red lips, and a divine voice. She may be dressed in black, white, a vaporous pink dress, or a luxurious period gown. Legend has it that no man can resist her beauty and sweet request. Once a man gives her a ride, she eventually transforms into a monster with a horse's head. La Chegua also appears to men walking late at night, luring them with her sweetness before revealing her true form. She can also appear as a crying child by the road or near a river. When someone picks up the child, it transforms into the horse-faced monster. The origin story in Costa Rica suggests that La Chegua was a young woman cursed by her mother after she tried to hit her for refusing her permission to go to a party. Some believe La Chegua is a demonic manifestation. In the province of Guanacaste, La Chegua also appears at dances and festivals, flirting with men. She leads them to a secluded spot under a Guanacaste tree, where she transforms when the man tries to kiss her. According to legend, the Mother of Waters is an enormous snake, as thick as a palm tree, with two horn-like protrusions on its head and uniquely thick scales that repel bullets. It inhabits rivers and lagoons that remain perennial as long as it resides there. It is believed to have an exceptionally long lifespan, potentially spanning hundreds of years. Attempts to harm or capture the mother of waters are said to result in the death of the perpetrator. The creature is feared for its immense size and strength, capable of swallowing a whole calf when hungry. Folklore warns of its formidable presence and the dire consequences of encountering or disturbing it. In Dominican folklore, the Baca is a mythical creature or artificial being created through witchcraft. Legend has it that by making a pact, one can gain wealth and protection from this entity. Although often depicted as resembling a cow, the Baca can transform into various domestic animals like oxen, bulls, or even cats, while some tales claim it has wings or a mishmash of different animal parts. Scholars suggest it might be a product of collective imagination, prevalent among the lower classes due to lack of understanding. The pact to create a baka typically demands a soul as sacrifice, which varies from the firstborn child to any child of the pact maker or even the pact maker themselves. According to folklore, the baka claims a soul nightly from those who dare enter its territory after designated hours, starting with lesser souls until it fulfills its quota. Upon the owner's death, the Baka may pass to the eldest son, closest relative, or the next owner of the land. It's believed the Baka is confined to its land during daylight hours and can only leave if exercised by a professional priest. The Chiguapa is a mythical creature from Dominican folklore, known for its human-like form with brown or dark blue skin backward-facing feet, and long, glossy hair covering its body. These creatures are said to reside in the high mountains of the Dominican Republic and are nocturnal by nature. Due to their peculiar footprints, which don't reveal their direction of movement, chiguapas are considered mysterious and elusive. It's believed that making eye contact with them can lead to permanent bewitchment, and their only vocalization is described as a whine or chirp. Chiguapas are seen as magical beings, captivating in appearance yet often viewed as dangerous. They are sometimes compared to mermaids, beautiful yet potentially cruel and deceitful. 
Legends suggest they can lure unsuspecting travelers into the forest under the guise of romance, only to harm them afterward. Some tales mention benevolent chiguapas who mean no harm, but evidence supporting this is scarce. According to law, capturing a chiguapa requires tracking them at night during a full moon, accompanied by a black-and-white polydactylic dog known as a cinqueño dog. Chuzalongo is a mythical creature from Ecuadorian folklore dwelling in the Andean cliffs. Its name in Quechua translates to seductive and evil child. Legend offers various origins for the Chuzalongo. One version suggests it could be the offspring of Urkuyaya and Urkumama, symbolic children of the hill. Another, more earthly version speculates it may stem from incestuous relationships among family members or between siblings. Historically, some believe the Chuzalongo myth emerged during the Spanish conquest, possibly used by Creoles to evade responsibility for children born from unions with Amerindians. Interestingly, the creature is described with blonde hair and blue eyes. In appearance, the Chuzalongo is consistently portrayed as humanoid, resembling a small child around six years old, with long hair, often blonde and pale skin. Some versions depict it with backward-turned feet to evade pursuit. Curiously, it's said to carry an unusually large penis, sometimes mistaken for an umbilical cord. Symbolically, the Chuzalongo is seen as a collective offspring of all women, adding a layer of incestuous symbolism to its existence. Known for its insatiable sexual appetite, it boldly seduces or rapes women, often fatally assaulting them afterward. Legends vary on whether it feeds on blood, but agree it possesses lethal powers, capable of killing with a mere gust of wind when angered. Cuyanqua is a legendary figure from Izalco, El Salvador, known for its unusual appearance, a large creature with the lower body of a snake and the upper body of a pig. According to local tradition, the Cuyanqua appears to announce the arrival of rain, sometimes appearing in groups. At nightfall near Izalco, people have reported hearing eerie croaking or shrieking, accompanied by tremors underground, which locals attribute to the Cuyanqua. This phenomenon often causes panic, prompting residents to stay indoors early in the evening, especially near rivers and ravines where the creature is said to roam. Those who claim to have encountered the Kuyankua describe it as a shocking sight, causing some to faint or lose their ability to speak temporarily. Folklore advises that if one encounters the Kuyankua, remaining calm, closing one's eyes, and trusting in God, is the best course of action. The Kuyankua is believed to still inhabit areas around the Atacazol Resort, moving along streams, coiling around trees, and occasionally disappearing from sight. Legends also suggest that where the Kuyankua rests, springs of clean and fresh water emerge, contributing to the presence of beautiful springs in local municipalities. La Diables originates from the story of an enslaved African woman who made a pact with the devil for eternal beauty. According to legend, La Diables appears as a stunningly beautiful woman with an elegant poise and captivating figure. However, her face remains hidden under a large brimmed hat, and her long dress conceals a cow hoof in place of one foot. She walks with one foot on the road and the other in the grass beside it, emitting a scent of both exquisite perfume and deathly decay. La Diablesse ensnares unsuspecting male victims by casting spells on them, leading them deep into the forest where she then vanishes. Confused and disoriented, her victims often meet tragic ends, falling into ravines, rivers, or becoming prey to wild animals. To break the spell of La Diablesse, you'll have to perform a ritual. One must turn their clothing inside out, light a sacred candle, and walk home backwards, away from the last place where she was encountered. 
The Cadejo, a supernatural creature from Central American folklore, manifests as both a benevolent white dog and a malevolent black dog, distinguished by their eye color, blue when calm, white Cadejo, and red when aggressive, black Cadejo. These spirits roam isolated roads at night, offering protection or posing threats to travelers. The white Cadejo safeguards travelers from harm during their journeys, while the black Cadejo, sometimes likened to an incarnation of the devil, attempts to harm or kill them. Described as large, shaggy dogs with glowing eyes and goat's hooves, they exude a strong, goat-like smell when near. Folklore warns that facing or speaking to the Cadejo can lead to insanity. The Warakabra tiger is a cryptid felid reported from the mountains of central west Guyana. It is described as resembling a jaguar, but with variations in size and coloration. One account describes it as slim and mouse-colored, while another mentions a gray hue with a mark above its eyes. What sets the Warakabra tiger apart is its unusual behavior. It is said to hunt in packs, potentially consisting of up to a hundred individuals. These packs reportedly include two large animals and several smaller ones of varying sizes, as observed from tracks found in the area. The creature emits a loud howl, similar to the call of the grey-winged trumpeter bird, from which its local name, Warakabra, is derived. It is rarely seen and reputedly fearful of water and dogs, fleeing from the barking of dogs but showing no fear of fire. During the rainy season, the Warakabra tiger inhabits mountainous regions. However, during the dry season, when not hindered by streams, hunger drives them to descend into lowlands. Recorded sightings of the Warakabra tiger are scarce, with only four instances where the creatures were actually observed. In Haitian folklore, the Lugaru is the island's version of the werewolf, intertwined with voodoo practices and beliefs. Unlike traditional werewolves seen in other cultures as distinct species, the Lugaru is described as a human who practices dark voodoo arts. They use the skin of an animal to transform into monstrous forms, such as half-wolf or half-bird, enabling them to commit evil deeds under the cover of night. Similar to the concept of the North American skinwalker, which involves individuals using supernatural means to assume animal forms, the Lugaru's power lies in their ability to transform between human and animal shapes. This dual nature makes them formidable and dangerous, often leading to fear and suspicion within Haitian communities. The Picudo is a legendary cryptid from Honduras, known for its nocturnal habits and blood-feeding behavior, much like the infamous Chupacabra. It prowls during late-night hours, taking advantage of its stealth to avoid detection and capture in the country's mountainous and forested terrain. Described by witnesses as having a dog-like body with a pig-like face distinguished by an elongated trunk, the Picudo possesses a powerful neurotoxin. This toxin is emitted through its trunk, capable of paralyzing both animals and humans, rendering them unconscious while it feeds on their blood without their awareness. The creature targets cattle corrals and occasionally houses with open doors, silently approaching its victims and administering its paralyzing toxin before extracting blood through its mouth. Its unsettling appearance and stealthy behavior contribute to its fearsome reputation among those who claim to have encountered it. In Jamaican folklore, a duppy is a ghost or spirit that inhabits various natural settings, such as bamboo thickets and cottonwood groves. These spirits are believed to be the souls of deceased individuals, but exhibit characteristics similar to old-world shapeshifters and tricksters. Duppies are active from 7 in the evening until 5 in the morning, sometimes appearing even at noon. Their mischievous activities range from simple pranks to more malevolent acts like arson, beating, poisoning, 
and stoning. However, they are believed to be powerless against twins and individuals born with a call. Protection from duppies includes using a left-handed crack with a tarred whip and burning specific herbs. The most notorious is the rolling calf, a shapeshifter appearing as a hornless goat with one human front leg, one horse leg, and two goat hind legs. Its eyes glow like fire and flames emit from its nostrils. Often seen with a rattling chain collar, it can also appear as a cat, dog, pig, bull, or horse. Butchers, murderers, and obia men are said to become rolling calves in the afterlife, using their newfound powers to harm others. Rolling calves emerge on moonless nights to raid cattle pens for molasses and cause mischief. They blow bad breath on victims, but can be repelled by flogging with a tarred whip or sticking an open knife into the ground. Remarkably, they fear the moon to a superstitious degree. Encountering a rolling calf requires swift departure from the area, as they are relentless in pursuit of revenge for any thwarted attempt to ward them off. Lechuza, from Mexican folklore, is a hag who appears as a normal woman by day, but transforms into an owl-like monster at night. This creature possesses formidable powers, including mimicking voices, controlling the weather, and even causing death with her piercing screech. As a ravenous predator, the Lechuza preys on humans, making encounters perilous. Survivors of such encounters attribute their escape to exploiting the Lechuza's vulnerability to salt, which is said to ward off or repel her effectively. The Careta Nagua is described as a bewitched wooden cart that emerges at night, pulled by two emaciated oxen with tight hides over their rib cages. Leading this spectral procession is Death himself, often depicted as skeletal or, alternatively, two hooded skeletons carrying candles. The cart's wooden wheels emit a terrifying creaking sound so spine-chilling that no one dares to peek out of their windows when it passes by. Legend has it that this eerie manifestation dates back to the Conquest era, reflecting the profound fear and trauma experienced by indigenous peoples. Spanish soldiers, often accompanied by ox carts, raided villages at night, capturing inhabitants for forced labor in distant silver mines. The unfamiliar noise of the carts was interpreted by the natives as a manifestation of nocturnal spirits disrupting their peaceful villages. Elders claim the Careta Nagua foretells death when it rolls through deserted streets, accompanied by distant howls of dogs. Those who claim to have seen it report suffering from fever or fainting, while others are said to have died from sheer fright at the sight of this terrifying spectre. Additional accounts describe the cart's supernatural abilities, such as its inexplicable ability to vanish at corners, only to reappear on different streets. La Tula Vieja is a haunting figure from the folklore of Costa Rica and Panama. Her legend tells of a once beautiful woman who, after secretly bearing a child out of wedlock and committing infanticide by drowning, incurred the wrath of God. In punishment for her actions, she was transformed into a grotesque and terrifying creature. According to various versions of the legend, La Tulevieja is described as a short, stout woman with a distorted appearance. She has swollen breasts that often leak milk, and her hair is tangled and unkempt. Her physical form is sometimes augmented with bird or bat wings, reminiscent of a harpy, and her legs are depicted as being inverted, similar to those of a bird of prey. Additionally, swarms of ants are said to follow her, feeding on the milk that drips from her breasts. In certain regions, La Tulevieja's legend has merged with that of La Llorona, another infamous figure in Latin American folklore. In these interpretations, she is portrayed as seeking out babies to nurse with her milk, occasionally resorting to abduction to satisfy her dark desires. 
Some narratives also present her as an avenging spirit, targeting promiscuous men and negligent fathers as her victims. To ward off La Tulevieja's malevolent influence, various protective measures are suggested in different versions of the legend. One common method is reciting a specific prayer believed to repel her and keep her at bay. The Pombero is a significant figure in Paraguay mythology and cultural heritage. This mythical being is believed to be a small, ugly, humanoid creature with distinctive features that vary slightly depending on local accounts. Generally, he is described as having short arms, hairy hands and feet, and a stature that allows him to move stealthily through the forest. One of Pombero's key attributes is his nocturnal nature, earning him the title the Man of the Night. He primarily inhabits rural areas, especially forests or abandoned houses, and is known for his mischievous behavior. Pombero is considered a harmless troublemaker who delights in pranks such as releasing cattle, stealing eggs and chickens, frightening horses, and causing other forms of agricultural mischief. He's also credited with impregnating single women through supernatural means, often resulting in the birth of hairy and unusual-looking children. Despite his mischievous tendencies, Pombero is not typically perceived as malevolent. In fact, he is sometimes regarded as a protector of the natural world, particularly birds. It's believed that he can imitate birdsong and may intervene to prevent harm to them, especially from children who hunt them with slingshots. To appease Pombero and avoid his disruptive actions, traditional practices involve leaving offerings for him, such as cigars, rum or honey. These gifts are meant to placate him and deter him from causing harm. In some areas, repeated offerings can even lead to a friendly relationship with Pombero, where he may protect one's home and belongings in return. The Jariacha is a Peruvian creature that emerges at night, known for its long neck and glowing eyes. It preys exclusively on those who have committed incest or other serious sins against their spiritual kin. Its presence is heralded by a chilling call that echoes through the hills. Ja, 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 ja. This eerie sound terrifies villagers who lock their doors in fear. In the aftermath of its cry, tension grips the community as they suspect one among them is guilty of taboo acts. The parish priest condemns the presence of this supposed spawn of Satan, promising divine punishment. Eventually, the culprit is exposed and publicly punished in a ceremony known as an auto de fe. Being called a jariacha is the gravest accusation one can face in this community. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any mythical creatures or cryptids for these countries. If you know any, leave a comment down below. The Sukuyant is a figure known for its eerie transformations and blood-sucking nocturnal habits. By day, they disguise themselves as elderly individuals, but at night, they shed their wrinkled skin and transform into fireballs, soaring through the sky in search of victims. Able to slip through tiny openings like cracks and keyholes, they feed on human blood, leaving behind bruised marks. Legend has it that if a sukuyan drains too much blood, the victim may perish or even transform into another sukuyan. These creatures are said to dabble in black magic, exchanging blood for sinister powers with Basil, a demon residing in the silk cotton tree. To uncover a sukuyan, tradition advises surrounding the home with heaps of rice or placing it at crossroads, forcing the creature to count every grain, revealing its true nature. To destroy one, coarse salt is said to be fatal when placed in the mortar alongside the discarded skin, preventing the creature from reclaiming it. Asima is a vampiric witch resembling an elderly person with red eyes and downturned toes. At night, it sheds its skin, folding it neatly away, and transforms into a glowing blue ball of light akin to a corpse candle. 
This spectral form allows it to slip into homes through the tiniest openings, seeking victims with a taste for their blood, which it consumes repeatedly until they perish. Bitter-tasting blood repels the acema, but those it favors display telltale red and blue marks at bite sites. To deter an acema, locals consume bitter herbs like garlic or strategically place sesame seeds, rice, and owl talons near doors. The acema, compelled to count these items, may become frustrated enough to abandon its hunt before sunrise, when sunlight can destroy it if its skin remains exposed. Alternatively, discovering and salting its hidden skin causes it to perish in daylight, unable to wear the shriveled hide. The Duan is a mysterious entity from Trinidad and Tobago with distinctive backwards-facing feet and knees, and a face hidden beneath a large straw hat save for a small mouth. They are notorious for mimicking familiar voices, especially those of parents, to lure children into the forest. Mischievous by nature, Duans delight in playing tricks, raiding gardens, and leading children astray until they are lost in the woods. Trinidad and Tobago folklore draws heavily from African roots, influenced by French, Spanish, and English cultures. Elements of African religious traditions have significantly shaped the island's supernatural beliefs, often blurring the lines between myth and religious practice. Stories featuring Duins serve as cautionary tales designed to impart moral lessons to children. Bigfoot is an alleged ape-human-like hybrid creature of North American folklore. Bigfoot is often described as a large, muscular and bipedal human or ape-like creature covered in black, dark brown or dark reddish hair. The Charua people were a significant indigenous group in present-day Uruguay, Argentina and Brazil. Despite the impact of European colonization erasing much of their culture, insights into their beliefs, mythology and rituals have been preserved through oral traditions, historical records, and archaeological discoveries. One of their mythical creatures was Emboi Tui, depicted as a serpent-like creature adorned with colorful feathers. As the guardian of water sources, Emboi Tui was believed to dwell in rivers and lakes. The Charua people honored Emboi Tui as a symbol of life and abundance, conducting rituals to seek its blessing and ensure the continuous flow of fresh water. The Waco are formidable animal spirits from the folklore of the Quiva people of Colombia and Venezuela. Resembling pacas with distinctive spots and long, menacing fangs, they inhabit caves that they intricately dig with numerous exits and hiding spots. Known for their carnivorous and anthropophagous nature, Waco pose a grave danger to anyone who ventures into their caves. Their eerie call warns of their presence. Interestingly, they have a peculiar aversion. They do not pursue individuals who are naked. Legends recount daring encounters with Waco. In one tragic tale, a Quiva man, abandoned by his wife, recklessly dug into a Waco nest against all warnings. His swift demise came as the Waco swiftly devoured him after he disturbed their lair. In contrast, another man ventured into a Waco cave driven by vengeance for his pregnant wife, who had fallen victim to these creatures. With fierce determination, he succeeded in exterminating the entire nest of Waco, avenging his wife's death, but at great personal risk. And there you have it. If you enjoy our content, please like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. Thank you, and safe travels, my dear friends.